So tell me about you, you getting robbed. Did you get robbed? I did get almost robbed. What happened? What's the story? Like? So I was walking um, like down the street and um, I shouldn't have really been out that late. It's like 9.45. What time was it? Nine. Okay. Like 9.45, 10 p.m. And um, the UPDF guy that lives by my house, uh, he was warning me. UPDF means? Uh, it's like Uganda. Military force. Military. Yeah. The, okay. the, the highest ranking one. So this happened in Uganda. Yeah. It happened awesome. there. Okay. So the guy tells me, he said, listen, you, you need to stop coming in so late and, you know, because bad things can happen here. So you, should, you shouldn't do that. So I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I know he's right. So he said, you should always take a boat home. Mm. So this particular night, I went to the gym and then I was like walking and um, I was going to go home, but I stopped by uh, Buko Bukoto Heights, okay. which is uh, owned by Sudir. It's um, a okay. Kabira related thing. So I went by, I got a, um, uh, a red dry wine because you know you know me I'm a big wine drinker okay you know you know me personally so. <laughs> absolutely yeah I, I never saw, I saw a drink I didn't like wine drinker <laughs> everything almost if I if I get a chance yeah so something I just didn't feel right when I was uh I was walking back okay so I'm walking back down I'm on the phone and um I have the phone like out so um what I think was a, a boater guy a motorcycle driver guy drove past me boater boaters are motorbikers in Uganda, they, you, you find them, for context, fellas, you find them in many places, many African countries. You find yeah. them in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Tanzania, and Uganda. Let's Kenya, go to yeah. Kenya as well. Okay. Yeah. So I, th I think with the, the, the guy, I'm walking there, the guy passes me. Mm. And so I think he turns around. So he turns around and, um, you know, the, the, the road is demarcated because it's poor. Yeah. So the road, you can't use the full length of it because you'll be in the gutter. Yeah. So when somebody comes by, you or drives pack, they're closer to you than you actually expect. Absolutely. So, you know, me, I'm thinking, you know, well, this guy is coming towards me, but there's no way, I mean, because I'm, I'm far enough. So I, I have it in mind. Yeah. So the guy's by himself, he's maybe doing like 60 kilometers an hour and the guy grabs my phone, right? Oh my gosh. He grabs my phone and um, I, I kind of anticipate that he might try something like that. So he doesn't get it, but the phone dropped down. Okay. But the guy grab is so, his, it's by itself. It's so strong. And with the momentum, he can literally break every Absolutely. bone in your hand. And I'm not a small man. I mean, I'm not as big as you, you're but not, I'm about you're not, you're not a small 105 man. kilograms. He, he's not a small man. This dude, and I was yelling, I was like, please come back, get the phone. Right? This guy was, oh gosh. Yeah. So, but um, my, my pinky is still, I have problems with it to this day a little bit. It's been like six weeks ago. You know, I'm not young anymore. So that's those very, kind of injuries. That's very sad. I mean, um, you, an American guy. Yes. Shay Duke Jackson. <laughs> why are you in Uganda? Why in Africa? Well, I used to be, or have some element of, let me say, uh, tribalism. But before coming to Uganda, let me kind of just go back in sure. the context. I had... Um, some experiences with some Africans okay. that maybe I, I know, knew their name was different, like uh, Tanakwe, mm -hmm. but they grew up like Americans like me, but their okay. parents were African, but you know, they were first generation African or Nigerian kids or whatever. So where are you from in America? I'm from California. California. Okay. Great stuff. So then there started to be a situation where at least online or uh, somewhere in person, um, there was a little bit of a, a, a grift between, uh, um, sorry, not a grift, but um, some back and forth between our community and their community. Okay. So I kind of joined in on our side, right? As an mm -hmm. yeah. African-American. Naturally. Yeah. So, um, so I was, I wouldn't say like anti-African or anything like that, but I was kind of like, you know, they're there, I'm over here. Um, and then I got accepted into medical school in Poland. Okay. So I, I was late. Er, um, old at the time, 34. So I, I dropped everything I had. I went to Poland. And the first guy I met in Poland was a guy by the name of Ni Adara Big Bay. He's a Nigerian guy. Nigerian guy. Hey, you know what's going on, man? I, I see in the store you're from where? America. He's like, okay, I've been living here for like five years. Then I was stuck there that Christmas. This is the only guy that brought me something to eat. Oh my goodness. For the holidays, right? How amazing is that? So it, it really changed my perspective. Great. And then also, once I got there, and even I was walking around with the African, I was no longer African American. I'm now in the European African community. You would get racial slurs from these Polish people. Yeah. You're the N word. Absolutely. You're the monkey. Mm -hmm. Go back to your country. Yeah. So I was like, wow, uh, <laughs> the world looks at me like them. And yeah. in America, I'm like, well, we, we are different, but the world sees us the same. Yeah. So then I started participating in the Nigerian Independence Day, Africa Day, things like that in Europe. So that gave me more confidence to want to, uh, to so, come to so Africa. So you two became close friends. Oh, he's one of my best friends in the world today. That's great. That's great. Yes. So 
What do you have to say to fellas? Because I know a lot of Americans, a lot of African Americans, unfortunately, feel like Africans do not like them for some reason. Yes. From your personal experience, w what can you say about that? Um, well, I think it's because uh, the Africans started achieving. Okay. In America. Yes. At, at a high level. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the African Americans um, were not achieving to the same level as some of these immigrants. So then I think because maybe we were making fun of them at a certain yeah. point and then this is an opportunity to, to get back or they may have had a Nigerian boss and you know it's easy to have a few negative interactions with one or two people yeah and then and you know, judge everybody castigate the whole entire group Absolutely. just like me having a situation with the guy that tried to grab my phone in Uganda it's and easy you, to say that oh you got all like that yeah. or whatever but I think there's just uh, ignorance on both sides absolutely you know and not understanding like you 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 said on my, our podcast one day We need mediators, the referees to understand both sides. People like you and myself that have been, that have grown up in yeah. other parts, but we kind of understand the other culture. Sure. So that's the thing. And they just don't understand one another. Somebody will make that uh, statement is ignorant. So we can we say safely that for our African-American brothers and Caribbeans and all other people that have never experienced Africa, they need to actually move into an African space, not just based their judgments on one or two interactions they've had with a couple of people, but move into an African space to really experience Africans to understand that you will find good people yes. and bad people everywhere. 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 So it doesn't really matter where you're from. You know, you're going to find stupid people in some areas and intelligent people in the same area. Yes. So in your community, there are absolutely intelligent people. Yes. There are also absolute stupid people. <laughs> yes. So you should be comfortable with, you know what? It's just people. Because yes. Give them an opportunity. Right. You cannot judge everybody based on some experience you've had with one or two or three or four people. Right. At all. Absolutely. So, okay. So what, what moved you to Africa? Why did you say, okay, I'm going to leave California because, you know, a lot of African dream of America. Yeah. They want to go to the US. They want to go to LA and stuff. Right. Why do you leave LA for Africa? So I was, I was in Poland and um, my, the, my YouTube career, which I, I, I wasn't trying to make, become a, make this a career. Okay. But it started picking up to a point where I was, as a YouTuber, earning more than the dean of my medical school in Poland, oh, right? wow. Okay. So I, I was like, well, let me just knock off the bucket list because I'm going to be a doctor and go back home anyway. I'll be out of Poland. Sorry, let me stop, stop you right there. You were earning more money on YouTube than you would earn as a medical officer? Um, well, yes. Yes. Wow. I, don't, I don't, at the time. At the time. Even the dean of my medical school there in Europe wasn't earning what I was earning. Is that something you would encourage somebody to do? To st stop their studies to do YouTube? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. But I, I just, I'm one of those people that um, I give it all I got. Mm -hmm. So it's something I'm very passionate about and I know yeah. I can make a career out of it. Okay. But no, I mean, I would, I still graduated. So okay. I would still. Oh, so you graduated medical school? Yes. Oh, wow. I, I didn't drop out. So fellas, if you need CPR, <laughs> you know who to talk to. <laughs> uh, say Duke Jackson. Okay, let's go. So, um, I wanted to go to uh, my ancestral roots, which I figured might be like Nigeria, Ghana, but it was very difficult to get a visa um, because the Nigerian embassy, I went to Nigeria once, it's very difficult. The embassy is always difficult to deal with. So Uganda had a policy at the time, um, South Africa's visa on arrival, but- uh, you, you, you don't think Nigeria is a dis difficult visa because the US is a difficult visa for Nigerians? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I think that Nigeria is a difficult visa for any anybody. Oh, really? Even Ugandans. Okay. They, they can make you go back for one thing on the visa, make you pay all over again. Oh my it's goodness. It's just a process. Yeah. It's not that we have the bilateral thing. It's okay. just Nigerian embassy is. Okay. Just Google. Okay. Shout out to Nigeria. But uh, <laughs> so anyways, I, I wanted to go there because most of our roots probably come from West Africa. So I ended up going to Uganda. And at first I'm like, okay, you know, mosquitoes biting me and everything like that. I really like it. And then by the end of the trip, I started to like it. And then by the second time I came in 2018, I figured I would always, this will always be a part of my life. I just loved it so much. Mm. I just loved the sea of black people. I just loved, um, I saw people that look like people I knew back in my hometown that I grew up with. They look just like Harold or somebody else. So I felt very comfortable, even though I didn't know what they were saying. You know, you know, you look like a Sipo in South Africa, like a Tabiso. You look like a Ugandan person. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, I, I mean, yeah, I know African-Americans and Africans are the same people. Yes. But you know, with years, some, sometimes you get a bit of a mixture in the blood, mm -hmm. you know, different in a bit of a, you know, finer face, whatever you call it. But you look like one of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No yeah. doubt about it. Yeah. Like you could go to whichever country in Africa. They weren't even trying to speak to you in English. 
Yes, happened. No, they will not. They will speak to you in Debele. They will speak to you in Swahili. Mm-hmm. They will speak to you in Zulu. Yes, but you, you look like a vendor from South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. So, so Kinganda started in 2018, and at the time we we, we struggled a lot. But um, I under this journey, we saw so many people wanted to come back to Africa. They didn't know how to do it. And Kinganda is your. Yeah, YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah, that's our okay. channel. That's our Just giving channel. context to my people. Yeah, so um, this is also a studio. Okay. So, yeah, and, that, and, and the more I got here, and the more I felt that I should be on the continent. Did Just you the, feel welcome in the continent? In, in ways, yes. Did you feel people accepted you easily with no issue? Didn't question you very much? Well, I think it's a great, it's a great question that you're asking. Okay. Because I think that we think that we're going to get this big, Welcome back. There you go. Yeah, we think people are from America. Airport. Yeah, drums are gonna be there. People dancing for yeah, you. you know and it looks like a lot of Americans get very disappointed when they come to Africa and people looking at them like, "Oh, uh, hi." Yeah, you? exactly. Like, you know, I don't know why we uh, we we feel like some of us we're so entitled. Yeah, but I think that we expect that you know we, we see like Black Panther or Wakanda or something like yeah. that. It's gonna be. It's not like that. No, it's not like no, that. It's not. Yeah. Uh, you gotta whatever you did before doesn't really count. Absolutely. You have to start all the way. You need to prove yourself. From, you know, and uh, that's something that people have a hard time with. Yeah. But I, I felt like I, I felt like they treated me as I was trying to treat them. Okay. Which was which is why I've been able to stay here. Absolutely. So I feel like you know, getting over the cultural thing, somebody's trying to use me or whatever. I think mm-hmm. if you're a good person, and that is your energy. Did you did you find anything different with the culture in Africa? What did you find most difficult when it comes to culture and tradition and stuff in Africa in general? I, I felt like the way people, I, 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 let me just say this, because the cultures are very many. Absolutely. Yes. You can pick one, it's okay, a specific one. Yeah. So let's say, because um, Kampala is mixed, you know, Buganda is the, the, the culture that's king here. I don't really have a problem with, I think, the, the cultures. I think that people here are more social than we are in America. Really? Oh, yeah. Africans are way more social than we are. Please explain that. So, for example, you go to Acacia Mall on a Sunday, mm-hmm. which I believe I've met you on Acacia Mall. I yeah. met you there. Yeah. You see people with their families. Kids getting ice cream. It's something that we would see in the 80s or 90s. Families, uh, people talking, uh, even a man holding somebody else's hand. It's not gay. It's just yeah. in brotherhood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, just explain that to people. In Africa, men hold other African men hand. Yeah. So I can hold, let me hold his hand. Yeah. I can walk with you like yeah. this, talking to each other. Yes. You know, we've learned this from childhood. It's just yes. uh, affection. You know, yes. it, it has nothing to do with, uh, homo, you know. Homosexuality. No, no, no. Not yeah. At all. I even see my, even in the, in the black community, African-American community, they would do it sometimes. Oh, really? Yeah, but okay. it didn't mean you were gay. It was just- Oh, a, really? No, but now everything is gay, gay, gay. So you see men respect each other. Even if there's a disagreement, you will not see um, immediate violence like you can in the States. Because mm-hmm. in the States, you're not going to be getting in somebody's face for so long before somebody do some. Because a lot of our brothers and sisters, we hate each other in, in, in America because of what's been going on. But in Africans, you can have a disagreement you will not see women fighting or arguing. Um, so I like that. Because Africans, in some way, fighting is a little bit low for, for Africans. They find it like very low class. Yes. Fighting with each other. We can talk about things. We don't have to, you know, we, we yes. don't have to do, there's nothing to prove like that. Right. Yeah. Now, now uh, there are a lot of things people would do. Let's say if they do it here in America, they would really get in a lot of trouble. Like, really? Like what? I don't know, like if you if you scam somebody, if somebody comes and like finds you, they're gonna kill you probably. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're in, in in Africa. I've seen people like, oh, well, he took some money from me. Let me just let it go. And most Americans, we like, no, nah, we're not letting that go. We're gonna come to your house. Oh, really? You. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, for sure. If they ain't gonna come get you and come get your mom, that's get how, your mom. Oh, yeah. But she has nothing to do with nothing. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's different. And people have a lot more respect, a lot more family. The hard thing is how how business is done. In, in Africa. In, U- in Uganda specifically. Okay, please explain <laughs> In Africa. <clears throat> in America, for example, like if you ask me to do something, you know that I'm going to for sure do it. You yep. be here. Okay, I'll be there yep. right away. Right? You know that's how I yep. am. And that's how we want to keep our relationship. Mm-hmm. Most people in the business sector that I've encountered in Uganda um, or most African countries, it's let me overpromise something that I can't deliver because I'm in, I'm in fear that you will say no. Oh gosh. So and I, I don't think that is personal, but this is how things maybe go here. So people oversell themselves. 
over a promise, under deliver is a big thing that happens here. And so for Americans, it's very frustrating because you, you start losing trust in people. Yep. And it's not that you can't do business here, but it's a big problem in most a lot of the developing African countries. So the culture of doing business is a hard thing for most of us. Maybe not the culture of, of, of how things are done in, 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 in society. Any specifics? Well, in, 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 in most collaborations to, to get bigger, B2B is what you need to do. So I'm a business, I'm a studio. And I want to activate, let's say, an um, an event with an alcohol brand. Yep. You know, you, I, I've been in situations where you can pay people the money, give them the quality of service they're looking for for the partnership. And people want you to beg a lot. Like, even if you have the money, like this is one of the countries, if you have money, you can't get anything done. Really? It can be very difficult. You have to like know a lot of... So you beyond, need some, beyond the money, you need to know people. You got to... You, you need... There's one part, there's a lot of gatekeeping that goes on in African business society. It doesn't matter if you have the money or not. So that person has to be able to say, you can achieve this. You can spend your money here. And in America, we're a more merit-based society. Like, okay, I'm smart. I'm talented. So my door should be open based on my efforts. And you were trying to explain this to me, uh, I think one time. Yeah. And I, it's something I still just don't get. You're like, hey man, you know, your merits are, are one thing, but that's not how it all always works. Yes. And people can, you know, be little what you're trying to do based on the fact that, well, who do you think you are? Like, let me just show you that you're nobody and make things hard. That's the problem that I have. I think that's what's keeping so, the content behind. Do, do you feel like you need to know a lot of people in Africa in order to achieve one thing? Absolutely. Okay. You need to, you know, not a lot of people. You need to know the person if or you, someone. If you don't know the person, you're not going to get anything done. It's going to be very difficult. Have you, have you managed to make some connections to know some people? Yes, so here and could, there. So you could forward, you know, forward whatever you're doing. Yes, but it took some time and you still don't know enough. Okay. <laughs> and obviously for you to know somebody, you must be offering something to that person or yes. somebody has to take you to that person. Yes. How did you proceed? Well, I think that uh, the, the first big opportunity uh, was when we did the Imbararu Lodge. Mm -hmm. But um, people saw that, some of the things we were doing. So somebody would contact you from that office or whatever. Okay. So that was a good experience. I went there. I went to um, um, the Chimpendu Lodge. I think it's um, uh, Tim Boisley's place. Yep. He's a minister of agriculture. So that was, that was great. And um, you know, I, I know him. He knows me. So, but it took like... It took some time to <laughs> learn, to know people in order for them to open doors for you and get you going. It takes a lot of... Like for us, we come from a society where... Go to drive through. Your food is there. Everything yep. is there. Amazon delivers the same day. That's the culture of Americans. That's the culture of Americans. And so we're used to that. And we feel like because we're from that society, some of us, and I'm going to just be honest, I'm not trying to get canceled here, but we feel like we're coming over to Africa. Africa has said we want you people to come back here. Yep. So we feel like, okay, well, we're here. So this is what is behind here. You need to change this sure. element about it. Sure. And unfortunately, <laughs> you know, uh, we uh, Africans like things to go a certain way. Mm -hmm. doesn't matter how you want to do it. Yeah. You need to be able to prove value and prove that what your way works are doing things for somebody to even consider you. It doesn't even matter if you have a lot of money because these people already have a lot of money. People who can open doors, they're not really worried about your money because a lot of people are, are very rich. So the richest people I've ever seen in my life were, were in Africa. Like they were black. Oh, really? Yeah, because who, who can have 3,000 cows on a farm that each cow is like $3,000 a piece? Exactly. That, Only in Africa. This... You, you, the, you know, you go, the guy brings you there to his place and you, you're like, is this Disneyland? There's no black person in America that I've met that have things like that. But I think that, you know, it's just that we have to be patient, understand like, okay, you're black, but you're still going to be foreign. Even if you're from like Congo, you come to Uganda, you're going to be foreign in Uganda. You know, you're going to be foreign in South Africa. So you got to start all over again. And that'd be a, that's a problem for some of us because we want things to work quickly based on our skill set. Sure. But that doesn't mean anything. Absolutely. It's very hard to deal thank, with. Thank you so much, O'Shea. We're gonna